surrender Dorothy. The Wicked Witch of the West terrified Dorothy Gale and her companions when she scrawled those words across the sky in black smoke from her broomstick in the 1939 classic movie, The Wizard of Oz. It's always been my favorite movie, but The Wicked Witch terrified me too when I was a little girl, the witch and her flying monkeys. She's always been the quintessential bad guy. Her words, surrender Dorothy, a menacing threat. And yet, as I've gotten older, I've come to feel differently about the witch and her words. I no longer see the witch as a villain. In fact, she's kind of my hero. If we're going to discuss the duality of human nature, we should also explore the duality of our circumstances and experiences, because those are the things that influence our behaviors. And if there were ever a word that wouldn't seem to have another side to it, it's the word surrender. It's a powerful concept and one that can be used for our benefit in spite of what it seems to mean. On Mother's Day 2010, I officially became the mother of a heroin addict. Instead of celebrating with candy and flowers, I spent the night on a cramped two-seat hospital bench waiting to see if my son was going to live or die. David had overdosed, not on heroin because it hadn't been available to him that day, but on a pain medication that he ingested, trying to get the high that he got from heroin. Not only did it land him in the hospital, but the doctors told us that if they couldn't reverse the effects of the pills, that he would need a liver transplant if he lived. In that moment, when I learned the truth about what was going on with my son, I lost control of everything in my life. That terrifying knowledge stripped away everything that I thought I knew about myself and my place in the world. Suddenly, I became that person that other, the one that kind of thing happened to, because it was certainly never going to happen to me, and yet it did. It was my own personal tornado, tearing up everything, spinning my world around, and landing me in a place where everything that I thought was solid and real was gone. The thought of losing my son was devastating. But when he survived that night without needing a liver transplant, and we began to navigate our way through the horrors of addiction, the thought of losing myself and everything that I knew became devastating in a whole different way. Now, I saw a sign in a store a while back, and it said, I'm not a control freak, but can I show you the right way to do that? <laughs> and my kids said, oh my gosh, that's you. And they were right. It was me. You don't get to be a control freak when your kid is addicted to heroin. The drug is in control. Any power that you thought you had to plan, to set expectations for your life, to end up where you thought you were going, all of that disappears. You are clueless and terrified all of the time. But an odd thing happened as time went on. When you lose your expectations about what the future is going to be, when you surrender to your loss of control, when you still do your best, but you turn outcomes over to the universe or to your higher power or just to time, suddenly many things become possible. I didn't know what was going to happen at the end of the journey. I didn't know if my son was going to get well, and I had no idea what my life would look like at the end of a day, let alone the end of a week, a month or a year. In fact, I couldn't take it one day at a time. I couldn't take it a half a day at a time or even an hour at a time. 
My husband and I were down to 15 minutes. That was all we could manage. And when we got through that 15 minutes, we moved on to the next 15. It had a strange effect in the short term because I had no idea what new crisis awaited us at any given moment, and there were many. I was forced to live in the present. I genuinely found myself counting simple blessings and pleasures, like going to a fast food restaurant and eating food that was deliciously bad for me. There is really nothing like a hot, salty, greasy French fry when life stinks. I surrendered to Burger King. Whopper Wednesdays were part of my salvation. But even more important in the long term, I tried things. Because why not? What did I have to lose? Amid everything that was happening with my son, I was experiencing another crisis in my work life as the internet was replacing all of the small newspapers for which I'd been writing. Plus, the economy was tanking, which threatened our family business. And did I mention that I had just turned 50? I was in a whirlpool of mess. I had no idea what to do to solve any of it. So I taught myself how to blog, because that was the answer. Start a blog, make a million dollars, watch all your problems disappear. Well, clearly, that was not the answer. but. It was a step that I took in a direction that I might not have gone if I had been in control of my life. I was beat. So a step in a direction, in any direction, as opposed to total inertia, was a step down the yellow brick road. It was a win. That blog gave me a voice when I didn't feel like I had one. And although I quickly realized that I was not going to make a million dollars, I decided to surrender the outcome of my expectations and my plan to see what would happen. I kept at it, letting go of my expectations of what it needed to be. The beauty of not knowing what was coming next and not being married to expectations was that every good thing that happened was a lovely surprise. And good things happened by planting those seeds, by trying things and simply giving them my effort, which some days was a little and some days was more. I surrendered my expectations of how or if my son was going to get well because I realized it wasn't up to me. It was up to him to make the decision to get well, to do the extremely difficult work necessary to get and to stay clean. I got him into rehab twice. I drove him to meetings, doctor's appointments, church. We went to 9 o'clock mass together five days a week for months. I gave him my effort where I could, but ultimately I had to surrender my expectations. I gave it up, all of it, to, in my case, God, my higher power. But notice that very particular choice of words. I didn't give up. I gave it up. I surrendered to my loss of control. I still did my best. I tried every day. But I let go of outcomes, knowing that as long as I did my best, whatever was going to happen was going to happen. That's the natural next stage of things. You do your part, and then you let it go. You pass the baton onto whomever or whatever is going to touch or manage or contribute to the situation next. I locked my inner control freak in a closet. She was not happy in there. She made a lot of noise trying to get out. 
But eventually, she came around. And I think she came around because even locked up in there, she realized that she was finally free. Free of the need to make everything all right, let alone perfect, which we all know is impossible. Free of managing everyone else's everything, which we all know is impossible. And free even of managing her own everything, which we both found out is impossible. Eventually, I stopped holding my breath my shoulders came down from around my ears, and you could see my neck again, which I know is not the best view these days, but at least I no longer look like a linebacker. I continued to plan and to initiate plans into my work and into my life, but I added something. I added the let's see what's going to happen option, which simply meant that I would be open to what might evolve not being married to my expectations, and not counting results as a fail if something different happened than what I had expected or planned or hoped for. So what happened as a result of all of this surrender? I continued with my blog. I've since written two books in a series based on a brand that I created around it. I am now known as the not ready for granny panties and the dirty words lady, and I can assure you that was not a planned outcome. <laughs> I speak to groups and businesses and associations all of the time about losing control, embracing fear, and cleaning up our self-talk. I'm here, who knew? I've watched my son get well, get married, start a family, and help countless other people struggling with addiction. Surrender has given me the life that I never knew I wanted. Now, I'm not suggesting that we don't plan or that everything terrible that happens is a blessing. As the only species capable of imagining the future, planning is inherent to who we are. But we are all also that other, the one that things happen to that were never going to happen to us. We all get hit with our own personal tornadoes on this journey. And when we do, maybe we need to plan just a little bit less. Maybe we plan, we initiate the plan, but then we stop. We live in that 15 minute space, which is really all we have. Maybe we give it up. We lose control. We breathe, celebrate moments, eat some French fries, and see what's going to happen next down the yellow brick road, because it might eventually lead us to Oz. Surrender, Dorothy, and watch the magic happen. Thank you. <laughs>